The digital era has undeniably enhanced the lives of millions across the globe. It has created new ways to connect, to learn, and to prosper. But the breakneck speed of changes ushered in by new technology, coupled with the fact that we are still working just as long and hard as ever before, has made many folks uneasy about the direction that we are headed as a society. Therefore, the real question is, would we be actually happier without the invention of the internet? In this video, we uncover all of the non-obvious ways that our modern digital age has negatively impacted our lives. We will then provide some recommendations on how to better balance our relationship with technology. Ultimately, progress is not necessarily a reflection of happiness. After all, what is the point of growth and more efficiency if only a handful of society benefits while the rest becomes more miserable? The concept of the internet as a system of interconnected computer networks was born in the 1960s and evolved into a commercially available global web by the 1990s. That means that virtually every generation has made extensive use of the internet and digital connectivity in one way or the other, from work-related tools like email and Zoom, to social media platforms like Facebook and TikTok for our personal lives. But, do we actually enjoy this technology-driven life? According to a study published by Fast Company in 2023, 67% of Americans surveyed actually preferred the world as it was before the age of the internet and smartphones. That includes 63% of people aged 18 to 34 who think that life before the internet would be better. That means Gen Zers and Millennials many of whom have never even experienced a life without the internet, still realize that the technologically laden lifestyle that we have developed is actually not ideal. So, why do many people believe that the old, simple lifestyle was superior? Many may perceive life to be better in the pre-internet days, likely due to their current experiences at work and at home. At work, New technology has brought about an elevated workload along with more stress. The good news is that projects and communications that used to take one work week can now be done in one day. But the bad news is that workers don't get those extra four days back for their leisure time. Instead, they are now expected to repeat that output four more times to increase productivity and profits. But of course, not with four times more pay. Business now fundamentally moves faster than ever before. In fact, modern workers are being asked to do more than any other previous generation, but with no proportional boost in pay. Younger generations are now realizing that they are working more, but still cannot afford a house. Therefore, it's no wonder why people prefer the previous era. Of course, technology has impacted our personal lives as well. When we want to unwind from a long day of work, we can now turn to one of the many on-demand forms of entertainment that can provide instant gratification. But too many options and too many ways to get an immediate release of dopamine have also been proven to lead to long-term dissatisfaction. Additionally, social media apps like Instagram and TikTok have now been programmed to show an unlimited scroll of content with no defined endpoint to tell your brain to stop. All of these distractions have led to a decrease in our focus and attention span. In 2004, the average attention span on a screen was around two and a half minutes. Today, it is just 47 seconds. The availability of entertainment and ease of social connectivity has made life almost too convenient these days. People are now less likely to leave their home to meet a friend or go see a movie since they can just text them and stream Netflix at home. But these conveniences can lead to an increase in social isolation along with a decrease in physical health due to less physical movement. On top of that, many people just post the best version of their life on social media, which can lead to unfair comparisons that can hurt one's mental health. 
Additionally, the social media algorithms learn what you like and purposely show you content that you will likely agree with since it will lead to more engagement on their platforms, despite creating more division within society. The digital age has brought about more productivity and connectivity, but at the expense of our physical and mental health. The future doesn't seem to be shaping up to be more positive either. Most folks are not actually excited about the advances in AI, as the unrelenting speed at which the technology is evolving is making us all worry about what reality truly is. AI and robots will likely lead to widespread job losses as well. Goldman Sachs predicts that 300 million full-time jobs will be eliminated or diminished by AI. So, the vast majority of people don't want to continue down the path society is headed, yet it seems inevitable that we will anyway. Why then? Well, it always comes down to money and power. Many corporations and their executives have benefited tremendously from continued use of the internet and social media. They also stand to extract even more value from the growth of AI. We are therefore witnessing, in real time, one of the main drawbacks of a capitalistic economy. The primary goal of a private company within the system of capitalism is to profit, while all other concerns, including the well-being of people, take a back seat. Meanwhile, the government doesn't have a huge incentive to intervene much either, since these large companies generate jobs and tax revenue and also provide donations to politicians as well. Therefore, we are all stuck in a situation where technology takes over because that is what's profitable. Although we won't ever be able to stop the progress of technology, we should still have the power to control our own happiness and destiny. The goal of technological advancements should be to make our lives easier and better. Our quality of life should improve over time and new efficiencies should allow us to create more time for ourselves instead of creating more output. Yet, the average leisure time of modern workers has actually decreased in many countries since the 1980s. For example, by the 2010s, leisure time dropped by 11% in Spain and 14% in South Korea. So, what's the point? If more output doesn't lead to higher wages or a higher quality of life, and all the wealth and power gets concentrated at the top. Fortunately, this channel always looks for solutions instead of just stating the facts. In this case, we think that the power to change it all is in your own hands. In reality, the workers hold all the cards. Companies need workers to help run their business, and therefore workers should direct the rules of engagement. If you don't think that's possible, then take a look at France where labor laws and unions that protect workers' rights are stronger than most parts of the world. Countrywide strikes and protests are also not uncommon to see when pay or conditions fall below an optimal level for workers. Okay, but what about when AI replaces everyone's job? We all still need a source of income, or at least access to goods and services. That's when the government comes into play. It will be their responsibility to provide a social welfare plan that will allow us all to enjoy a minimum standard of living, even if we are working less or not at all due to the AI revolution. This brings up the theory of a universal basic income, where all citizens receive a regular payment to live, regardless of their income or employment status. But where would this money come from? Well, it could be derived directly from the work of robots themselves. For instance, Bill Gates proposed a system that would make companies pay a tax for every robot they employ over a human. Expanding on this suggestion, we could tax the output of AI-run corporations more efficiently as well. Currently, only 6% of all tax revenue in the US is generated from corporate taxes. For comparison, taxes on individuals amounted to 42% of all tax revenues. If fewer people are working in the future, then it seems logical that governments will need to shift their tax collection from individuals to corporations. 
that determination will fall squarely on our own shoulders. We all have the power to elect politicians who will represent our best interests, and also vote out lawmakers who cater too strongly to the will of corporations. If we want stronger labor laws and higher corporate tax rates to sustain our future, then it is our duty to vote for representatives that aim to make corporations serve society and not to hoard profits at a low tax rate. To take back your own happiness from endless scrolling and streaming, you can consider placing limits on the time you spend on the internet and social media. Let's face it, most social media platforms today are filled with ads and sponsored posts, so you're not even seeing your own friends' posts 90% of the time. That also means you're not even choosing the content you want to see, but rather being told what to consume. So, you can stay stuck doom scrolling like a zombie, or realize that you have full control of your time and can make intentional decisions to take breaks, go outside for a walk, or force yourself to meet with friends for coffee each week. Of course, we are not saying that you need to quit the use of technology altogether. Rather, we challenge you to be a bit more mindful of what you consume digitally, so that you choose how to benefit from the internet instead of the other way around. What do you think? Would you be happier without the internet? Do you think we can shape the future for the better? Comment down below with your thoughts. Also, please subscribe if you like this type of content. As always, thanks for watching.